Hi, I'm Evan. <laughs> I'm Teddy, and we're the Picture and the Poet. And this is Conversations with Lola, episode 18. No, it's 17. No, last, is it? Ugh, I hate coming across like we have no idea what we're doing. That intro was good enough. Sure. Good enough is what we strive for here. Manitoba has shut down again. Um, not completely, but almost. Today we'll be talking about 10 things that uh, COVID has taught us. We're in our COVID wares. Uh, this is nicer than I would wear. Oh yeah, this is This is like up <laughs> upscale. There are a lot of people that are like, you need to get dressed to do your work. I'm like, no, I need to look like a terrible flaming bag of garbage. <laughs> and that you do. Perfect. The first thing this pandemic has taught us is working from home isn't for everyone. I think before the pandemic, like working from home was something that was like really glorified and people would look forward to, feel like they're lucky for. And then the internet started putting all these memes of like what life is mm -hmm. like working from home. And we were just kind of sitting here being like, yeah, this has been us for a few years now. We've heard mixed reviews. Like some people are like, oh yeah, working from home is the absolute shit. Some people are like, I need that. I need to go in, I need to collaborate. I need to be with people. Yeah. So it's been a bit of a mixed bag. So the next thing on our list is that we are lucky to work for ourselves. We have so much opportunity to just kind of continue doing what we're doing and chugging along at home when something like this happens, we have the power and the choice and ability to pivot and readjust course. We're having, so grateful. Having job autonomy is like just something that's been so important to us. Some days I was like, ah, oh, I wish I just had a job to go to and I didn't have to think of things and had a little bit more structure. But I'm just, I don't feel that way anymore. <laughs> <laughs> The next thing that we've learned is the wedding industry that we are in is very vulnerable. Up until the pandemic really thought like our industry was totally unshakable. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm like, yeah, like people will want photo and video of their weddings for years to come. Like it's not a trend. It's just that it kind of showed us like, oh, we need to kind of, we don't really have that much job security and yeah. that, you know, things could really just kind of fall apart when before we felt a little bit invincible. Not invincible, I don't wanna give ourselves that much no. credit. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's taught us to diversify a little bit. I have lots of ideas. Expect me on camera more. You gonna become a cam girl? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Teddy Jean, I need only more fans. I need more cash on the side. <laughs> That's what we mean by diversify. Yeah. <laughs> follow, follow Teddy's uh, OnlyFans account. The next thing on our list is that video calls um, are, are not actually that bad. Yeah. <laughs> Before the pandemic, we would always have the meetings at our place in person. And then the few times that we had to do video calls, it was a bit of... It, it was just, a bit of a bummer. It, it wasn't was like they were terrible or anything, yeah. but it was just like... You always connect more with people when they're in front of you. Video calls, especially if they're high enough quality, are really... You can really connect with people. It adds to the relationship. It doesn't take away. Fifth thing that pandemic has taught us, small can be beautiful. That's how I've always felt about you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I heard, as I read that, I was like, I know exactly what joke I'm gonna make. It's been interesting seeing some couples, uh, not, not grope, cope. Uh, grapple. Come, grapple. <laughs> it's, been, <laughs> it's been so interesting seeing our couples grope. <laughs> Overwhelmingly, the people that had to pivot and change to a smaller wedding, not one came out of that experience feeling like, they miss something right. out from that. So much good has come out of having a small wedding day and I hope that part of it continues after the pandemic. Agreed. The next thing we learned from the pandemic was that there are a lot of good things close to home. We rag on Winnipeg. I mean, it's you're not from Winnipeg if you don't yeah, or have a bit of- People hate Winnipeg, guys. <laughs> like Before the pandemic, it was just so, natural for like you want to get away you have to travel far but this last year we've kind of been forced to look at locations to travel and get away closer to home mm -hmm. and we've learned that there's so much even just went a few hours of winnipeg that 
we had no idea was there. And there's a lot of good to explore and see. Definitely. Can you see Lola's head and the mm -hmm. camera? Yeah, we've been able to see her this whole time. Just hilarious how it's like smashed up against that piece of wood. The seventh thing, gratitude is a really good thing. It's just unfortunate that it's times like a pandemic where you have to really realize that. There's been so many moments since the beginning of this year that I've just been thankful for the smallest things. Like I've been mm -hmm. thankful for our 500 square foot home <laughs> that has a yard. It's it's when it's when you lose things or lose access to things that you like you you don't know what you have until it's gone. We're grateful for the the shift it's been in our own life to just look what we have and value it. The next thing on our list is worrying doesn't help anybody. Like March was like, okay, something's happened in the world. I need to take a breath and see what happens. But we also still thought everything was gonna be fine. Like I'm like, yeah. yes, we're still going to New York City in two weeks. And then April happened and slowly everything just started slipping through our hands and crumbling away. And it was wedding after wedding after wedding. It was like, yep, not having it this year. But this just because of how much we lost all at once, it was, it was almost a little bit easier to be like, Okay, well, if everything's fucked, then whatever. Then, then, <laughs> then fine. Then fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good, if you're spirit, to... if you're experiencing anxiety, just stop worrying, guys. <laughs> just stop it. The next point is slowing down is okay. If you're mentally not able to sit down and be creative on how to market your business when you're out of work in quarantine, that's okay. The first wave was like really hard. I had no frame of reference of how it should go. And in some days I felt fine, some days it didn't. But I was I was lucky enough to connect with a, a therapy group, weekly Skype calls, whether I thought I needed it or not, I just hopped on these calls with people and talked through things. We, lo we lost so much work and instead of bouncing back and like, hey, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be super productive in this way, I'm gonna pivot this way, it's like, no, I'm gonna stop and slow down and allow myself to process what is happening. The last one on our list, dogs make everything better. We're clearly Lola obsessed, like duh, but there were so many people who got COVID dogs. Like So in about April, where Teddy was, you know, I was work, I was still working in the van a lot and Teddy was working at home alone. She's like, I need a dog here with me. Like having a project to work on, you know what I mean? Lola's not a project. She was. <laughs> but at the time, she was so difficult. Yeah. That it was like something to just think about and research and worry about and train. And like, True. at the time, we had so little yeah. work. And it was like, this is what I'm going to pour all my energy into. Yeah. And now, we, we, we could not have, could have ever asked for a more well-trained, although we feel like we didn't really do that. <laughs> well-behaved and sweet dog. Hey, Lola. I, I hate waking her up. Lola. 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 She is <laughs> literally snoring. This has been another episode of Conversation with Lola. Thanks for sticking around. Yeah, bye for now. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. She goes, I'm underage. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she technically a 49 year old woman? In dog years, but not in human years, and you know. No what? other way. No. What? Wait. In dog years, she's seven. Oh, right. Now in human years. Oh yeah. Right. It's you got the opposite. That right. Yeah.